Hello everybody, it's Voduke with the news. And the news is that Legends of Kingdom Rush got its first content update. Not just a patch with bug fixes, but actual content that's been added to the game. So, first there's just been some extra stuff added to the tutorial to make it a little bit more clear how leveling up works, but I'm not going to get into that. The new thing that's been added for every single level to benefit from is a difficulty setting. There is now a casual difficulty. This is the new thing. Normal difficulty is how I've been playing the game on my YouTube channel from the beginning because that was just the normal state of the game. Now, casual difficulty doesn't change that much about the game. The primary difference that you'll see is the items that you start with for every single adventure. So now, as you can see, there are nine supplies, three elixirs of life, three tents, three energy potions, three rope, and three picks. So the idea is that you can make it through every single node and have at least one HP healed after that in case you took some damage. Now, obviously that's not going to make it so that way you're invincible and it's not going to guarantee that you start every single combat encounter with full HP just from the supplies and the use of your items. For all you know, you could be playing absolutely awfully and run out of items still somehow. But the idea is that you don't have to worry as much about your HP because you have all these items to help you out. Now, because of how many items there are, once I complete a node successfully, there's a chance that I could get an extra item here, like some sort of healing potion. And afterwards, that extra item is going to be excess in here because I've already reached the um, cap of six, just starting off this stage. And so it's likely that I'll have to drop something right away. So you're not necessarily going to benefit from everything, but because these two things are challenge items and the chances of you needing to use the maximum amount of your challenge items are so low that you can safely get rid of those and it won't really make the um, map that much harder. So it does make the difficulty easier by putting it on casual difficulty, but when you do actual combat scenarios, chances are that you won't really feel the difference in the moment because of the fact that all of the enemies and all of your units are unchanged stat-wise. So all of your units have the same HP, damage, movement, and cooldowns for their skills. Everything functions exactly the same as it would on normal difficulty. But the thing is, because you have so many extra items, chances are that you're going to be buffed up a little bit you can afford to take bigger risks by just charging into battle like I'm going to do right here because if your unit dies, you can just use an elixir of life because you have so many to spare and you can very easily recover from any rash decisions that you make. So you can afford to play quote unquote badly or you can afford to play more risky if you're knowing what you're doing. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just charging forward of Rakesun, but because I still know what I'm doing, I still have the competence to come out of these combat scenarios perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to exit out of here because it's important to showcase all of the different item changes for the other stages. So the tutorial doesn't receive any item changes, but all of the ones that I count as actual levels, they do. And they're the same items every single time you start them. So every single time you start Stormcloud's Winter on casual difficulty, you're going to get 12 supplies, 3 elixirs of life, 3 tents, 3 energy potions, 3 torches, and 3 picks. Now, it might seem like you get the same items for every single adventure that you start, um, regardless of the map, because of the fact that you get those energy potions and tents and, and all that. However, it's just the supplies elixirs of life and tents that you get that are static. Well, the supplies is a slightly different number every time, but you still get a ton of those. But the idea is these last three are going to be different every time. And so instead of having energy potions to restore you back to normal, if you get exhausted, you instead have invigoration potions. Now, invigoration is kind of like the opposite of exhaustion and it cancels out the exhaustion. So if you put an invigoration potion on a unit that has exhausted, then it will cancel out the exhausted and give them invigoration. Likewise though, if you have an invigorated unit and they get exhaustion, 
then they're going to be stuck, exhausted, and not benefit from invigoration anymore. And instead of having three energy potions, you only have two invigoration potions. And so you can't actually heal as much of the exhaustion if you get it. However, your unit's going to be not only healed, but made even stronger when you do it. So there's a benefit in that regard. And on top of that, you get a ring of vitality. So you get extra health for a unit right off the bat and extra damage for a unit right off the bat as well. And so because of the fact that I have Rakeson right here, it's very tempting to just put the Ring of Vitality on him right away. And for the Sharpening Stone, because I can use Parry Stance to do multiple attacks, it's probably better to use this on the Orc. So you have some strategic options that you wouldn't get to start off with otherwise. So Casual Difficulty does add that to the game. However, I'm still not going to be playing it myself because I'm more interested in doing challenges and challenges are best played on the hardest difficulty possible. Which brings me to the potential of a hard difficulty mode. You see, because they added casual difficulty, now the chances of them adding a hard difficulty have increased because obviously changing any difficulty mode options at all leaves the hype up for a hard mode to be added. Now a hard mode is going to be trickier to implement compared to casual mode. You see, casual difficulty just adds more items but if hard mode was to take away items, it wouldn't really affect the difficulty in the same way that adding items does. Because in normal mode, there's enough items to get through some bad RNG and still make it out okay. But if you take away all of them, then the game will start to feel too unfair because it's too dependent on your RNG. A single dice roll will um, potentially spell disaster for you if you don't have any items to start off with and it would just lead to more restarts. Now, it probably felt that way when you first started out the game in the first place, so maybe it can still be overcome if you can play the entire game without any items, but even still, let's say that you can still unlock items after you complete a node, then it starts to not really feel like you're actually playing on a harder difficulty at all, because when you start building up items, then you can start making it through all the nodes and potential bad RNG, just like before. And so it wouldn't really do that much. And I know that Ironhide would probably want to implement a mode that has a bigger impact on your gameplay. Now, if they were to alter the stats of units, that would also spell a couple of problems. Let's say that they were to increase the attack damage of enemies. What that would do is throw off the balance of certain units. If you were using melee units that are meant to be tanking, then they would just be worse off because they're going to be taking more damage and therefore tanking less because they can't withstand that much attacks anymore. Now, your ranged units by relativity are going to be stronger because they can attack from safety without getting hit. So that's just going to make the game a little bit less balanced and therefore it wouldn't really be a good game mode to implement. Now, if they were to increase the HP of enemies, that would have a couple of problems with the code. Now, a magician can't reveal his secrets. So I can't explain why I know this, but units cannot have more than 20 HP. And that's why you get multi-phase boss fights and things like armor or damage reduction on units rather than them just having a bunch of HP all at once. So if they were to increase the health of enemies, it wouldn't really work out that much because it would only affect a couple of enemies. And it would also, once again, make certain units worse and better. So. What's probably going to happen, if they were to implement a hard difficulty at all, would be different types of nodes that you can get. So you can get different types of combat scenarios with enemies, and that can take a long time to make and to balance around, especially because of how many different party combinations you can have. You have to make sure that any single one of those can win, even if there are still going to be some disadvantages. Because after all, there are still some combat scenarios right now that are easier and harder depending on what your party is. But on top of that, there's also still the potential for different riddles to be added maybe, or different dice roll events. But if they were to do that, making them harder would kind of be a bad idea because let's say that you just make the um, dice have less success sides on them. All you're doing is making RNG a bigger deal. So the only way that I can see them implementing a hard difficulty is if they just change the types of combat 
that you can get. And in my opinion, if they're going to be putting in that kind of work, it's better to just make an entirely new adventure to play instead. That's what I would prefer, at least, rather than a harder difficulty for the adventures that we've already got, because everyone's already complaining about the length of the game, and chances are that even the people that are replaying the game a lot, like me, have played them enough that they've kind of already done as many challenges as they can do with the current um, party options. So the best thing to do instead would be to make new content, but that's just my opinion. So let me know what you think about casual difficulty. Obviously, casual difficulty is meant for people who haven't gotten to start playing the game yet, or maybe the game journalists that find the game too difficult to play. But even if it's not necessarily for you, I would recommend trying it out. Because like I was saying earlier at the beginning of this video, there are still riskier strategies that you can get away with uh, pulling off thanks to um, the increased items that you get to help you out. And in fact, I have some showcases of what I've done on casual difficulty to be uploaded later. So that's about it. Have a good day, everybody.